So, in this video, I was attempting to do some induction heating with magnets, and that completely failed. Instead, I managed to blow up filament. So, I made filament explode. Unfortunately, I didn't catch that on, on, on the video. But I also turned these magnets, I turned them into bullets. That's interesting. Hello everyone. As you can see, I've got magnets, all kinds of magnets, big ones, small ones, a motor, flange coupler, I can put it on top here. And uh, I'm going to try some induction heating. In order to do that, I'm going to 3D print a disc. And I'm going to put some magnets in this disc. These, to be precise. And uh, just in case you haven't, haven't seen this before, but uh, you can use magnets to heat up something. And that's called induction heating. So. If I drop these magnets through aluminium like this, it's moving really slowly. Much different than, for instance, well, if I'm going to drop this, <laughs> much faster. So, uh, what happens is, the magnetic field, a changing magnetic field, in an electric conductive material like aluminium, creates a current inside it, just like a coil. You know, if you have a coil, if you move from magnets past it, the coil will produce electricity, and vice versa. If there's a current in here, it creates. It also creates a magnetic field around this aluminium. The current inside this thing creates a magnetic field opposing the magnetic field of these magnets. That's basically it. And most of you probably heard of that before. But this is something we can use. So I'm going to print a disc, put some magnets in it, spin it around really fast, because the faster you go, the greater the current will be inside the material. So let's just pick up some material like this, for instance, run these magnets really fast past this, this piece of metal. This is opaco, this is uh, some copper tin alloy. And if I'm not mistaken, this will be heated up. I don't know how much, I don't know how it will go, but we'll see. Ah, so let's create a flange here. Um, I'm just going to delete these. Snap this to cursor. Shift S. Anyway, extrude 11 millimeters is the radius, like that. Extrude. 2 millimeters extrude uh, 6 millimeters extrude 10 extrude scale 0 fix G 1.5 this is the section of the flange I just take a top view spin tool and I've got in the tool menu I've got auto merge here in options enabled so as you can see right now these are overlapping so if I just press G hold down control left click confirm um, now it's merged that's like a side view let's just duplicate this point down where it's four millimeters that my cursor here G 1.5 spin tool once again this time I'm just going to use uh, three steps I remove doubles are removed I'm just going to press F fix extrude top view I can just snap my cursor here duplicate I'm going to snap this to cursor front view rotate like that and 
tap, snap my cursor back here, duplicate rotate 90, and shift R, repeat last action, shift G, select, control keypad plus, there we go, these, control F, face menu intersect boolean. So this is the flange that we need not really nice so look at this this is um yeah okay i press g twice gg 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 and i'm deliberately moving them inwards like so okay yeah if I just right click, uh, Ctrl Alt click this edge, you can loop select, but it doesn't work here. Out here, it does. So that's why I want to, want to do it like this. So I'm just going to loop select C, remove these, circle select vertices, select these, Ctrl keypad plus, duplicate rotate. There we go. Uh, shift R, repeat past action, and this is a lot better. So this is the flange, and we want a disk. So with magnets in it, I'm just going to select this, um, duplicate 60 and 60 millimeters like this. So the disk is going to be 60 millimeters. This is three centimeters out. So it's going to be eight millimeters high so you can just move this six millimeters up like this snap my cursor scale shift c and this is three millimeters it should be seven asterisk seven slash three seven divided by three and now we have our magnet magnet here yeah, I just press f fixed so that's the magnet Snap to cursor, snap cursor to origin, spin tool, and say use duplicates. Let's make eight magnets. Three hundred sixty. G. So th these are the magnets, and that's well. These are the elements that should be contained in a disk. So I'm gonna design the disk. I'm just gonna select these. this are area including this P separate selected I'm gonna select the magnets control keep it plus there we go duplicate P separate selection and uh, I think I should also select these by the way duplicate separate selection I'm gonna hide this H and I'm gonna so join these with each other control J yeah and uh, scale asterisk 10 divided by 3 I can just fix these two Alt F and then well there is a menu for it Control F face menu uh, triangulate Christ tries to quads so let's move this downwards a bit two millimeters or so and then this extrude like that I'm just going to select these and I'm not going to select these this is the area right duplicate there you go and this part should be 60 now it's 22 scale Sh shift Z asterisk 60 slash 22 
Here we go. Ah, <laughs> this is funny. G. This is the disk. Now I can cut out the magnets. Let's delete these for a moment. Uh, Control R, G. Snap my cursor here. Extrude scale. It's uh, Shift Z. It's seven, and we're gonna make it five. Asterisk five slash seven. I'm gonna cut this out. Uh, Shift G area. Yeah, that's a lot better. Control F face menu intersect Boolean. Here we go. Here we fit the uh, magnets in. So let's see. Do I have no manifolds? Control Alt Shift M. I have no manifolds. Why? Control N again. Recalculate normals. Ctrl Alt Shift M. No, okay. You just press uh, Ctrl Shift Alt M to check if there is no holes in there. For instance, if I could just uh, split this, that's the uh, Alt key Y. You could see that there is a hole in here. With the slicer project for the process for printing, it might make mistakes. So you have to make sure this is all a solid. Control Shift Alt M. There's no non-manifold. So this is beautiful. Let me just save this. Control S. Induction dot blend. Yeah, I've got more here selected. So I, I just want this disk to be uh, sliced. So I just select everything. Control T. File, export, STL, and on the right here I'm going to select selection only. Save it in induction.stl, export STL, like so. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a color, just for the fun of it. So this is it. Should I make it a bit higher? It's four. They just stick in three millimeters. That's not much. Ah, uh, you know what? Make it a bit, a bit higher like this. Yeah. Here's slicer. I'm just gonna add induction STL. Open. Here it is. Right, just move it a bit like this. It's got a, a one and a half centimeter brim, so this ought to be doing it. Let's look at layers. It's got a brim, it fits. Looking good. Preview. Now it fits on the bed, so that's all great. Let's print this thing. And I noticed I ran out of filament. Uh, my filament is almost depleted, so I cut some holes in here to reduce the amount of filament and see <laughs> if I can print something with the remainder of my spool. And let's see how the print is going. Now let's take a look. There's my filament spool, and uh, ooh, there's almost nothing left. Great! So, this is the print. So, um, I'm going to have to clean this up. Let me take a 10 millimeter drill, for instance. I'm just going to do this by hand. Yeah, 
let's see how it fits now it fits perfectly almost Fit a magnet in there. Yeah, of course it won't fit, it's too tight. But this is 7 millimeters, so I'm gonna get a 7 millimeter drill. And really, I'm going to do just do this by hand a bit. It's a tight fit though. So I'm going to put this like this. Yeah, so here it is. Take a piece of metal, like this, for instance. Put this here. And I'm going to turn this thing on. Yay! That didn't work out too well, but it lost a couple of magnets here. Ooh, that's quite powerful. I didn't expect that. I think I should glue them in. Well, Reality kicks in because, well, this is what's left of it. I glued the magnets in, started it up, and the first half second it was turning smoothly, no vibrations, it was wonderful, and then boom, it just exploded. As you can see here, this is what I recovered from all across the room. Amazing. And I held it like this, I just held it horizontally, and uh. Yeah, you don't hold it like this, that's just, <laughs> yeah, then you, you'd be in danger if something happens, but uh, yeah. One of the pieces hit my hip, or my jeans, and I even got bruised there. And uh, yeah, I should have recorded it. it, it would have been a great video, some entertainment there. So, uh, just to demonstrate how violent this got. It really exploded. I'm just going to move to the other side of the room. And this little the shades here are pretty thick material. And as you can see, it just uh, went straight through here, all across the other side of the room. With that little motor there, just this tiny little motor, I didn't re really expect it. I didn't expect it to be this high RPMs, but it is. So basically, yeah, I'm going to rethink this, take it a little more seriously, because I wasn't even wearing goggles or anything. I'm going to have to take this a little bit more seriously, back to the drawing boards, and uh, this time, I won't be so cheap with the amount of plastic that goes in. It should be a solid disc, I suppose. Yeah, so now I redesigned it. And uh, I even designed the entire motor here. As well as uh, the nuts and the bolts and, and everything. Um, yeah, and I made sure I kept it uh, according to the KISS principle as some people may know what that means. So this is it. So yeah, let's see what happens. I'm gonna print it. My spool ran out. This is all I have left. So I'm gonna have to change filament first. So first I'm gonna heat it up to 140 degrees and then I'm able to pull this out. But I don't want it to get hotter. Um, otherwise it might really melt and it will clog up and stuff. So I'm just putting it at, well, let's say 140 degrees. 
Yeah, it came loose. Yeah, that's it. And let's see how it goes with 240 degrees. And while the nozzle is still hot, I'm just going to home. It's still stuff coming out. <laughs> And now I'm going to print. So, I'm just curious at the force that's, uh, that's exerted on these magnets with this spinning. It's 15 grams for 8 magnets. So that's about 2 grams for each magnet. Yeah, so I found this motor. I've got the HRS, this is the RS, but it can run up to 21,000 RPM. So I looked up uh, what is the centrifugal force, this is the formula for it. Mass times velocity squared divided by radius, well that's easy to do. Velocity, which uh, should be in meters per second, that's uh, uh, 0 0.06 meters uh, diameter times pi is the circumference of 18 centimeters uh, it's 21,000 rounds per minute and we should uh, we should have per second so we multiply by 21,000 equals divided by 60 seconds because not like that so it's uh, 65 so almost 66 meters per second that's quite uh, interesting. Squared times the mass. The mass is uh, 0 0.002 multiplied by 0 0.002 grams equals. Okay, that's 2 grams. Uh, 0 0.002 kilograms. So uh, divided by radius um, that's in meters so divided by zero not zero three meters equals 290 newton that's 29 kilograms that's about almost 60 pounds 60 pounds of force on one magnet Am I correct with that? Let's just, I've got a centrifugal force here calculated. The mass is 0 0.002. Radius 0 0.030 millimeters. Meters. Angular velocity. Well, uh, uh, it's RPMs, so I can just put in 21,000. Yeah. 290 newtons that's uh, that's let's say 30 kilograms which is 60 pounds 60 pounds of force I'm not sure that my new print will hold this as well 60 pounds for each magnet so yeah I better be careful let me see in pounds there is yeah here pounds force LBF yeah 65 pounds I can hardly believe that a small object of 2 grams my goodness I'm not gonna hold that motor in <laughs> again I have to make some construction but this is uh, a bit more than anticipated who let's say we have a circle so and it's uh, rotating at 21,000 rounds per minute uh, that would be 21,000 rounds per minute which is divided by 60 it's 300 turns per second right 300 turns per second so basically if you have a circle and you're moving with uh, 
65 meters per second 66 meters per second or let's just write it down here 350 turns per second rotations per second so 65 65 multiplied with 3.6 equals 234 kilometers per hour divided by 1.5 for the miles per hour is uh, well almost 100, say 150 miles per hour so an object is moving 150 miles per hour in this direction and then within one second divided by 700 equals within 0 0.0014 seconds it's moving in this direction with 150 miles per hour so because well one 350 turns per second so uh, that would be 700 half a turns per second right so one div one second divided by 700 and then you know how many seconds it takes to make half a revolution and you're moving at 150 miles per hour in this direction and then within 0 0.0014 seconds you move in the other direction 150 miles per hour that's huge <laughs> actually that reminds me a bit about these flat earths if there's I, I, I watch videos about flat earth debunk global debunking and stuff it's, it's I don't imagine how they even think that the earth is flat because they cannot believe that the world is spinning at thousand miles per hour at the equator and they suspect at this kind of velocity you would just fling off the face of the earth <laughs> on the globe or the equator you're moving with thousand miles per hour that's correct but the change from here to moving here is taking 12 hours right so that's that's not much force in fact that's just you don't even notice it if you drive a car at 100 miles an hour that would mean that if you push the brakes it would take you about say 40 minutes to come to a halt you won't even notice that you're stopping so that's basically the force that <laughs> that's that you feel on the equator and but they, they they think like a thousand miles per hour that's huge but it's not it's really not but that's uh, just a funny footnote here that i just thought of <laughs> anyway so here it is here's my little disc i'm gonna be a bit more careful so i made this i'm just gonna put it in here and then I'm going to put this, this entire thing in a box. There we go. So I'm going to hang these cloths on the sides like this. Doesn't need to be much. So let's just drill a few holes here. that I guess so I'm ready but actually now that I know I could get hit by a 
60 pound little magnet at 150 miles per hour it's kind of scary now so I decided to wear my helmet my welding helmet so how do I look <laughs> anyway let's see how this goes right let's turn it on and see what happens That was a disappointment, but it does make a lot of noise. We can heat something up and see how that goes. So I glued a bin and a piece of cardboard with some duct tape and I glued this piece of aluminium to the bottom of this bin here because otherwise it would jump all over the place. kind of works so it did get warm though slightly yeah it's slightly warm now I'm just gonna fill it with a little bit of water and run it for a while and see what happens yeah what happened well I can tell you what happened One of the magnets got loose. This magnet came out, bounced off the tray here. There's a hole here. Went, th went straight between the tray and the cardboard here. The cloth really did its job because it went straight through here. And here's the little magnet. <laughs> wow so well I'm gonna conduct this experiment at a later time the water did get a bit warm but I think I'm gonna use a different motor I'm gonna do some other stuff with it well let's see anyway it's been a nice experiment so far MacGyver was a really wise man there's nothing you can't fix with duct tape and if that doesn't work, well, use more duct tape. So once again, I have to rethink this design. A famous person called Edison once said, before the first successful light bulb, I created a thousand light bulbs that failed. But I didn't fail, he said. I just learned a thousand ways how not to build a light bulb. So. 